is Emilia and in today's video I will show you how the mapping in integrations works and how it is done in ZigiOps. The mapping as a component of integrations defines how we will send the data from our source system to our target system. For each integration there are three main processes. This is the so-called ETL – Extract, Transform and Load. We extract the data, we modify it and then we send it to the other system. The mapping refers to the last phase, the loading. The extract phase is when we define what data we will collect and how we will collect it. For example, we have defined that the entity will be task, but which tasks we want to collect? Just the newest, only the ones that are assigned to a specific user, or do we have any other conditions? In ZigiOps, once we define the main entities that we want to transfer, we go to the operation level where we can have as many actions as we need. Each action has a source and a field map tab. Extracting is defined in the source tab. The filters and conditions there are about what data we will collect. The transform phase in ZigiOps is done in the background. It translates the data between the systems. If, for example, one of the systems works with XML and the other with JSON, ZigiOps will take care of that automatically. You do not need to do any adjustments or modifications. This is why the ZigiOps UI is mainly focused on the extract and load phases. The load phase is defined in the field map tab. The field mapping defines what do we want to send to the entity in the target system, which fields in the target do we want to create or update, and what values we want to assign to them. These values usually come from the source system. Let's review the example when we transfer Jira tasks to BMC Remedy incidents. The mapping allows us to define we want an incident in BMC Remedy, where its description field will contain the value from the Jira summary field. However, we have different options. The values we assign can come from the source system, can be hard-coded in ZigiOps, or be a combination of both. If we set a hard-coded description, every incident that we create in BMC Remedy will have the same short description. It will not come from Jira, but from a value in ZigiOps. Some fields require this. Usually, it is used when we have a required field in one of the two systems that is not required or is completely missing in the other system. In our example, BMC Remedy has required fields that do not exist in Jira, like first name and last name. If we want to create an incident there, we need to have some values in these fields. However, they are not present in Jira at all. In this case, we map the information that we want to transfer, summary and description, but as Remedy has additional mandatory fields that Jira does not cover, we cover them through ZigiOps by giving them a hard-coded value. This way, we provide all necessary data so that we can complete the data transfer successfully. If this is missing, Remedy denies the transfer and would not create anything. The transfer will fail. In the mapping, we have the following options. Direct mapping from a field of the source system to a field in the target system, hard-coded value, or a combination of them. For example, with the Jira task URL, we want to send it as a comment in Remedy, but we do not have the full URL and we need to form it. We combine a few values plus a hard-coded value. When you go to your Jira account, you choose a ticket and you can see that the URL of the specific ticket is the Jira URL, then slash browse slash, and then the ticket key. This is why we do it this way in ZigiOps. We take the first part of the URL, the second one is hard-coded, and the last one comes dynamically from Jira. This allows us to get the right value for each ticket that we extract and send the correct link to Remedy, for example. So far, we explained the simple mapping. It means one field on the left and one value on the right. The value can be an object from the target system, several objects one after another, hard-coded string, combination of objects, strings, etc. However, in the end, we have one field and one value for it. 
For most fields this works perfectly. However, there are fields that can have changing values depending on the situation. For example, if we take ServiceNow incidents to Jira Tasks case, when we have a status field, it can have different values, like new, in progress, resolved, and so on. The value can change, so we have several options. The first option is to hard code it so it will always have the same value. For example, status name in Jira equals in progress. This means that whatever happens, the status we sent when we update Jira through the integration will always be in progress. There are situations when this is valid. As a second option, we can use an object like the state field from ServiceNow. The state field can have different values just like the status name field in Jira. This is also simple mapping as we have one field and one value. However, in this case we would have a problem because statuses that are equal from a user point of view have different values in the two systems. In such cases, the two systems cannot communicate, so we need to do conditional mapping. Our third option is to add conditions. In ZigiOps, we can do that for each field in the mapping if we need to. With conditional mapping, we can have settings like If something is true, change the value in this specific way and send it. Let's take the example of transferring ServiceNow incidents to Jira tasks. When we update the Jira task bidirectionally, we want to send status name to Jira. However, ServiceNow represents the status values as numbers. For example, the status in progress in ServiceNow comes as 2. For example, this incident has status new. Here are the different statuses that are available in ServiceNow. If we go to Jira, the statuses are only to do, in progress and done. These statuses do not match with what we have by default in ServiceNow. Such things need to be planned at the time of forming the integration use case. If we, for example, leave it with simple mapping and match the status with the state in ServiceNow, it will send value 2. Jira will say there is no such status and will ignore it. This is why we put a condition instead where we say we want to send to Jira status in progress, but there is a condition. The condition is that the state value in service now needs to be 2. When we do this, if ZigiOps collects state value 2, we will change it to in progress and then send it as a status name to Jira. If this is not true, this condition won't match and we won't send anything. But we can add more conditions. So we add, when state is 1, this equals to new in service now, that is the equivalent of to do in Jira. Then we can add another one. When state is 6 in service now, this equals to resolved, set the status name in Jira to done. Now we already have conditional mapping. We also have other situations where we need more advanced mappings. For example, when we want to close an incident in ServiceNow. First, we do the same status conditional mapping as explained in the previous section, but in reverse. If the status in Jira is to do, we send 1. If the status is in progress, we send 2. And if the status is done, we send 6 to ServiceNow. There is something to keep in mind though. In Jira, when we click on Done, it directly closes the task. But in ServiceNow, if we click on Resolve and try to save it, it says 
resolution code and resolution node are mandatory, so we cannot resolve the incident if we do not provide these two things. When it is done in Jira and we want to resolve it in ServiceNow as well, we can do the following mappings in ZigiOps. Send close code to ServiceNow with value for example closed resolved by caller. Then add a closed node where the value can be anything. So we hard code it for example as closed in Jira. However, if we do the above without a condition, these values will always be sent no matter the status but we want to send them only when the status in Jira is done and this is why we use conditional mapping. We will not change the values themselves, but we will add conditions when they will be sent and when not. So we add a condition. If the status name in Jira is done, only then send this value to this field. This would be the same for the close code and the close node fields that ServiceNow is requesting. So if the status in Jira is in progress, we will send the status, comments, attachments, etc. But we will not send these two fields. If the status in Jira is set to done, we will send status 6, all other changes and also these two fields for closing. This way when one thing changes in Jira, this is a condition for three changes in ServiceNow. Using such conditions, you can literally do anything you need in your integration case. Some more interesting examples are A case is created in ServiceNow, but in order for it to be updated, it needs to be assigned to a specific group. If it is not assigned to this specific group, we do not update it at all. Or, if it is assigned to a specific group, we need to add an internal comment, and if it is assigned to a different group, we need to add a public comment. The conditional mapping is not always with one condition. In ZigiOps, we can have unlimited number of conditions. For example, with the condition about sending the close node to ServiceNow only when the status in Jira is done, we can also add more conditions like and the assignee name is not empty and the summary field contains a specific string. This way, all three things will need to be true in order for ZigiOps to send this value. Another example is ShareWell, where instead of one field for priority, there are two fields, impact and urgency. Then the priority is defined automatically based on impact and urgency. Jira, on the other hand, has the only priority. Based on these two values, we can generate different priorities in another system like Jira. In these cases, we can do two conditions. The priority in Jira will be with value highest only when impact in ShareWell is production and urgency in ShareWell is critical. But if the impact is production and the urgency is medium, then we'll send high. So the impact is production in both cases, but because of the second value, we change the value in Jira. And another case, impact is test and the urgency is critical. Then we can send low to Jira. This is how we can take the two values, impact and urgency, and change the value in Jira based on different combinations of them. Here is a little secret we will reveal now. ZigiOps clients will soon have the opportunity for even more advanced mapping. We are planning to add one more layer of mapping, so we will be able to have a whole mapping be executed in case a specific condition is true, and a whole different mapping executed if it is not true. This is an upcoming feature that will be live in a few months. There are three most common mistakes that can happen during mapping. The first one is, if there is a mandatory field and the client forgot to enter a value for it. The second one is, sending a non-existing field. The client defines a field that is wrong and does not exist in the target system. The third one is, the field exists, the client has defined it, but it is sending a wrong value. For example, the case with the status above. 
service now is sending status 2 and in Jira it is in progress. So Jira will not recognize status 2 and will say there is no such status, everything else will be transferred, the action will not fail, but the status will not be updated as it is with the wrong value. In other systems, if you send the wrong value, the whole action will fail. To prevent these mistakes, Zingiops provides a list of suggested values and fields. Some of the fields in the systems have minimal requirements. For example, in Jira, to create a new issue you necessarily need to send summary. Zingiops provides essential field validations. It detects some requirements of the target systems and if they are not fulfilled, it would highlight them. Mapping and doing your mapping right is critical for your integrations to work properly. This is why in ZigiOps we pay special attention to mapping and we have predefined working mappings in our integration templates. If you want to see how it works live and ask us about the details of your specific use case, book a technical demo with our team. Here is how you can do that. Go to ZigiWave.com and click on the book a demo button in the upper right corner. Enter your company email and then just choose a day and time that are convenient for you for the demo. Then, you just need to enter a few quick details so that we can have your contacts and know which systems you would like to integrate for the demo. That's all! We'll be happy to meet you! Thank you for watching and until next time!